بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to our community. Today we have a special topic for you, Youth Matters. The reason I choose that topic is everyone's talking about it. Some of us think they are problem and some of us think they are the opportunities and they are the future. So what we're going to do is we have two young persons with us today and we'll hear from them their own experience. So that will help us to understand their lifestyle they're going through or the problem they're going through so we can relate to our young people around us, inshallah. So without any delay, I'm going to introduce my guest to you. On my right, we have Charlie Campaign. How are you, my friend? Very good. Welcome to our show. Did I, did I pronounce your word right? Your name? Yes, that's absolutely 100% correct. Fantastic. <laughs> On my left, we have Dominic Baxton. How are you, sir? Asalaamu As Alaikum. How are you? Wa Alaikum Salaam. Thank you for uh, making time for us. No, thank you. I know you're a busy person. I know you do lots of good things. Um, tell me, what do you do? So our viewers will know. So, so I'm a recent graduate um, at the University of Greenwich. I studied film and TV production. Um, and I'm now running uh, to be a, a Liberal Democrat councillor uh, in Fantastic. one of our wards in Tower Hamlets. You look very young. And uh, I'm glad to know that you are actually thinking about <laughs> making a change. And that is really, really important. And I hope from our show today, some young people will try to come out and learn something. And um, if you could tell us that, why did you choose to be a politician in that young age? And when you are doing your studies, what did you go through? Because we, we are struggling with young people nowadays because they're, mm. they're going through a depression, they're going through mental health. Some of them thinking about giving their lives away. I mean, this is really mm. strange to some of us because we don't understand what they're going through. Yeah. Have you ever been through these things? Hmm. Very, very much so. And I just, I'll just start where you started. Um, I got involved in politics um, when I was about 16 years old. Um, it was back in 2016 when the Brexit referendum happened. That was sort of the springboard that got me sort of involved. Um, but I don't like to think of myself as a politician. I like to think of myself as someone who is, especially running for council, who's engaged in the local community and not just there to represent the community, but part of that community. Um, but obviously, you know, I've, I've just come through university. Um, I'm, now, I'm, now, I'm now working. Um, but I think a lot of the struggles of people going through university, people of a young age, really, uh, there is a mental health crisis in our country, and we have to recognize that. Um, and I've been in a situation myself where I've felt suicidal and I've wanted to take my own life. Seriously? I have, yes. Um, but you're a very successful person. You are doing so well. What would you think like that? It, I, th I think it can be for a multitude of reasons. And, and, and I think the stigma attached to mental health, um, you know, as you just said, you know, you look happy, you know, you sound like, like you're, you know, you're fine. Mental health isn't always visible. Mm. And I think there's a lot of hidden stuff that's hidden within inside us. How you know we just even just breaking that shell, being able to express the fact, or just even going up to someone and saying, "Look, I'm not doing okay. Mm. Can we talk?" Mm. That is really, really important. But it's also really important to have people around you who mm. offer themselves and say, "Look, I, you know, I don't know what's going on in your life at the moment, but are you okay?" And it, you know, we, we use that so often, that sort of hallway thing, are you okay, are you okay? And they, people say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. are you really okay? Mm. And that's, I think, that's the really important question we have to ask. Are you really okay? Thank you for sharing. You know, not many people will share it. Mm. But this is the learning process. You know, yeah. we go through a struggle and then we learn and mm. come out stronger. There's so much Like stigma. yourself. Yeah. Mm. You come out stronger. You know, like you've been through that and you come out stronger. Yeah. So that's the amazing part. And, that, and, that's, and, and it's not just that. It's, you know... It's, it's a process and I think you don't just, it doesn't sort of just stop and go away from one moment to the next. It, 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 you know, there's, there's a part of that carries with you over the years, mm. um, you know, just mm. because I've struggled with it previously in the past doesn't mean I don't now. Even, you know, I, I may look fine, 
but that doesn't mean that as soon as the cameras are off, mm -hmm. I'm really feeling. You know, as soon as I'm alone, you know, it, it, you know, it, it, I think there's so much more that we need to do to break down those preconceptions around people's health and people's mental health as well. And it's time to treat mental health with exactly the same uh, priority, exactly the same urgency as physical health. Thank mm. you very much for sharing that. Um, Charles, if I come to you, sir, I want to ask you something different. I'll get back to that. Mm. You know, we, t we actually, as a community, there are different, different parts of uh, um, background of people coming in. Mm. They don't understand the young people are going through, to be honest with you. Yeah. They think, why are they getting into gangs? Why aren't they into drugs? Why, are they don't, why don't they understand what we're feeling? We want mm. good for them, but they don't seem to understand us, and they're going up to the bad. Majority of people don't make it to the universities anymore, you know, because of the fees and this and that. So can you imagine 15 and 16 years old, they're struggling yeah. to think straight, to do something. So why is that? Why is it in that? Is that that generation or you think it's been there before as well? I think it comes from the idea that not everybody is afforded the same opportunities in life. You know, there are lots of people out there who it perhaps takes them longer to come to terms with who they are. And that doesn't mean that they're going out there and if they're doing bad things, that, that makes it right. But ultimately, there are a bunch of people out there who are on a bad path at the moment, but they're not inherently bad people. Mm. And we can help them. Sure and I think more than ever, you know, things like youth services, that sort of thing that I, I think are absolutely essential. and. We need to ensure that they have something to do. We need to ensure that people are looked after. We need to ensure that, you know, rather than writing people off at 16, 17, we're actually turning around saying, take the person as who they are today mm. or who they're going to be tomorrow. Don't write them off for the rest of their lives when they're young and they're making mistakes. Because frankly, every person from every generation, I guarantee will turn around and say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that and mm, has made mistakes of course. in mm, their life. Mm, mm. Definitely, definitely. So when, when, when we say young people, when we talk about 13 to onwards, mm. I'm talking about, mm. because that's when they try to do their own things. Yeah. And it's not wrong for community or the parents to think, look, listen, let me help you on that. Mm. You need to do these, these things mm -hmm. that will make you better. First, have a good friend. Yeah. Uh, companionship might help you do something good. Yeah. But you would, see, you would see young people turning around and say, no, I, I, I do my way. So mm. do, what do we do? This is a very catchy thing. Well, I think this sort of applies to life. I think we can all fall down a bad path if we don't have the right environment around us. And I think it's, you know, I, <laughs> I know what it's like with my mother. She's probably watching at home. Um, in the fact that she always wants, even now, still wants me to go down certain paths and she'll say, she'll make helpful suggestions about how it's best to handle my life and who I should have in my life and that sort of thing. And I think it's natural for any parent to be concerned about children going down this path. And I think they're right, you know, it is good to have a good environment around them. And what I'd say is it's not often about ensuring that they always make the right choice because nobody's going to make the right choice 100% of the yeah. time. Mm. But it's about ensuring that you're there for them and you help pick them up when they make the wrong choices, but you also help guide them to make the right choices as well. But do you understand where she's coming from in yeah. your mum? I mean, I mean <laughs> the, the poor heart, honestly, when we're when we in that age, when you're in that age, yeah. you understand that. Mm. How can I see that person I love so much that mm. I can see that person is taking the wrong path with yeah. friends, with mm. this and with that. But that young person, mm. It's not easy for him to take that in because he's still young. He doesn't have the life experience. No, he doesn't have that. So it's very difficult to put that through that young person. Yeah. And suddenly you see that young person is into something yeah. you don't want to be. Mm. And I think that's the thing. I mean, I don't want to say to young people at home, your mother is always right. <laughs> always believe her. She is always <laughs> right. I don't know how she does it, but she knows it. Um, but I think in terms of parenting, it's just a case of sometimes you learn from making the mistake more than not making the mistake because okay. it means that you don't make the mistake again and inherently i think we all will go through a phase at some point in our lives where we sort of don't really understand who we are and we're trying to discover who we are and we're going to go out there we're going to do things that we're going to regret in the future and this that the other and people will tell us we're making the wrong choices 
but you have to do it to learn the lessons. That's true. And, you know, if you take everything that happens to you, good or bad, as a learning lesson, then life is inherently a much better way to live. That's good. Um, we know one of, one of the issues is, uh, for young people, actually, um, social media. Yeah. Mm. You know, like, we are all hooked in. Mm. It's not about young people, to be honest with you. We shouldn't say that. Every one of us are yeah. hooked into it. We use it whenever we go, and all the time we're mm. using it. Yeah. But it has this bad side and good side to it. Yes. And it's, especially when it comes to young people, it's out of control. You know, they want to taste everything. They want to see everything, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Do you have these kind of issues with media, uh, social media? Do you think it's a problem, or do you think it's... I, I think social media um, is... That there are two ways of looking at it. In, in one way, it's a very you know, useful, it's a modern way of communicating with people, uh, with groups, with you know, you can communicate your messages. But it also does need to be met with some form of regulation um, um, on how we you know, treat social media, for example. I had an experience, um, actually a couple of experiences, um, in which um, you know, the old keyboard warriors uh, went after me and uh, just you know said really nasty things. And off the back of that, um, a couple of far right websites actually wrote some articles, uh, some really personal articles about me. Um, they hadn't spoken to me; they don't know me. Um, but it, it, it did trigger some really nasty. Just because we had different online. views. Yeah. Just just because we held a different opinion, mm. and, and 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 they believed those those views couldn't coexist. Mm. And I think that's where it gets. That's where it gets dangerous when there is no, when there are no safeguards in place to protect people from hate speech uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and those those kind of uh, that kind of language. Um, so obviously, you know, the social media we need to look at it really carefully. And when people post on it, yeah, the the user does have some degree of responsibility mm. to treat that with caution because you know, whatever you put in the public domain is public and people have a right to their opinions but people do not have a right to hate speech. It's true. Mm. One, one, one of the things, I don't know if you faced that, a lot of young people are actually going through mm. a bullying system. I mean bullying has yeah. become a really really nasty yeah. part of it that someone can take a picture of you and just put it on and there we go your life is destroyed. That person's mm -hmm. life is destroyed. Yeah. It's not a, you know, people take it as a fun, but yeah. it's not. Yeah. You imagine yeah. you, you, you go to school and the next day you find out, oh, my picture's everywhere, everyone knows about me. So how do we control that? Then? What do I, think, we I think actually when, if, you, you know, if you look at that, I think you'll find cases where that has happened. Yeah. Mm. And, and people's lives have really, you know, actually been destroyed. Um, when mm. people, and we're going back to that, we're going back to that point about mental health and suicide. Bullying does have a profound, a very real, measurable impact on people's mental health. Mm. Mental health decline will then lead to self-harm, suicide, mm. uh, and, and, and that's, that in itself we should be treating as a public health issue. Mm. Um, I think that it, in terms of social media there needs to be more regulation of social media sites. Mm. Um, there needs to be better safeguards, safety nets in place to stamp out hate speech, to systems to recognize when something is hate speech um, but again I think I think there is the responsibility of the user to mm -hmm. apply a bit of caution when posting something but most of the responsibility I believe falls on those big corporations Twitter Facebook Instagram the ones who allow at the moment that mm -hmm. kind of spe speech to go unchecked and allow that to flourish yeah. okay. um, Charles, I'm going to come to you. I want to ask him something before I um, come to your personal experience. Mm -hmm. What we're watching is like, like knife crime is one of the really big issues at the moment. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people died because of the knife. Yeah. A lot of murder happened in Tower Hamlet as well, we know. Mm. You know, a mother holding a son and she, he was stabbed and died. Um, where I live, down where I live, um, a guy came and stabbed him three, four times, and he died in, in the sport straight away. Uh, mother came, the police around him, and they said, no, you can't see him. She was crying just mm. because they said, we have to see what's going on here. And she was crying and screaming that he died for 10 pounds or 5 pounds, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, why is it young people are going through 
looking for this kind of stuff. Why are they doing this? What's in their head? I think it's difficult to actually get in the head of that. Is it that they're frightened of something or is that they're scared of the, what is it? Why it, are they it not? can be and it can be, you know, you talked about environments and sort of falling in with wrong crowds and things and, you know, often it's the case that, you know, there is such a thing as mob mentality in terms of fact and if you fall into that sort of crowd, it's difficult to get back out of it and you see so many people now who go to prison and they reform themselves and they become different people and it takes that sort of little bit time of way for reflection where they actually reform themselves and, and I think it's a difficult thing to, for, for people to do and I think knife crime, there isn't an easy solution to this because it's not a problem that you can turn around and say it's going to be solved by dramatically increasing prison sentences, it's not a problem that you can turn around and say it's going to be solved overnight because anybody who tells you that is lying to you. But it is a problem that I think is, should be community based. It should start here. It should start in the home. It should start with us. It should start with local councillors, hopefully. And I think that's what it's about. It's actually about bringing about a cultural change from the bottom up not starting at the top and thinking that we can just hand down things to people and think that it will work. You know, especially in, in where we live, mm. in Tower Hamlet, we have a lot of Asian community, a, a Bangladeshi community based here. Mm. Even the young people, if you tell them that, why are you guys struggling? What, what's, why are you struggling? You know, you born here, you already, this is your home, and they still think the racism and this kind of stuff, are, you know, mm. they, they don't see this equal, uh, um, justice, you know, they're struggling to come out of this. Yeah. Um, that's how they see it. Even when it comes to education or, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're struggling. Yeah. They think that it's not, they're not being fair or something like that. You know, that's young people, I'm saying. But it's, we can feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the 21st century and we still have racism it's in football. Cool in education, in, mm -hmm. in, when it goes to job, when it goes to pay rise, when it goes to... We've been hearing this for so long. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's surprising that we're still struggling in that position. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's something that's just... It's absolutely staggering and, and it's something... But do you think it's true though? Do you think it's true? Yeah, and I, th I, think, I think that does help drive things more than ever. I think unless you have been... You know, I, I make no reservations that I'm from a minority community and if you come from a community that is inherently seeking equity and is discriminated against, you always have that struggle because the majority always seek to remind you of your identity and remind you why you're not as worthy as them a lot of the time. And people do hit out when they're put in situations like that. And, you know, there is an incredible amount of gap between attainment in schools, in urban centres, where, like it or not, you know, urban centres are generally where people who come, who come from um, diverse ethnic backgrounds come from, live, and, and that sort of thing. And we have to ask the question, why is that? Why are these schools not performing as well mm. as the areas in the wealthy shires? And I think that has to be a question that I think the government and, and other people have to answer. And I don't, I don't believe that the children in the wealthy shires are brighter than these students that are coming out of here. I think it's just a case that they haven't been afforded the same opportunities. Yeah. You know? Definitely. They, they can't afford the private tutors. They can't afford all of these things. They can't afford the space at home. No, no. It's exactly. overcrowded everything. There is no space. With, with COVID and, and students having to work from home, you know, how many children would have been struggling? You know, people going to university and everything. And people thought it was just easy, okay, just let them all work from home, let them all work from home. Mm -hmm. some, ki some people didn't have that space. Some students didn't live in the university accommodation because they couldn't afford it. So they, they'd go to a university that was local to them and they'd travel in and they'd live at home and they didn't have the space to study. And university was often an escape for them and this, that, and the other. And it's no wonder that, you know, that perhaps people have been struggling. Yeah, do, do you have, um, uh, we live actually in, in a diverse uh, community here quite a lot. I don't know if, if you have any Asian friends or not. You know, um, I'm sure you have. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you have. Um, 
just to get this out of their head is really important mm. uh, for our community to flourish. Mm. That this is your home, you're welcome. Yeah. You're born here. They, they're born here. This is their home. Mm. You can't just say you go somewhere. Where, the, where is the person going to go? Mm. The way we see what the politicians are talking about, that if you mm. do this, I'm going to kick you out. If you do this, you're going to do this. Mm. And uh, somehow brushed everybody with the same brush, extremism and yeah. this and that. Really? Mm. You know, we all know how the media works, but we are using those names and words just to crush them down. Yes. That I've, got, I've got no space to go. I, I, I've been looked down into. Mm. And they're not picking themselves up. They could be more brighter. Mm. They're doing very well, but they could do much, much better yes, if they had, like you mm. said, equal opportunities and access to yes. those uh, opportunities. And, and but that's the thing. It's when it comes down to identity, people always, there is a large amount of people out there now that are rallying against people for saying, oh, I'm X identity. I come from this background. I come from that background. And... They seem to inherently say, oh, you always have to bring this up. You always have to bring this up. And it's like, no, we don't remind ourselves every day of our identities and the fact that we come from a different background. You do. It's inherent in the system. It's inherent in our education system, in our criminal justice system. It's throughout society. You know, it's every single day. It's the look that people give people who are um, black and ethnic minority in the street or cross the road when they see somebody who is black. Mm. It's the microaggressions of, of the everyday. But can I ask you one more thing, to be fair with the others, yeah. the, the bigger community, do you think that people are using their race card too often that it's easy to use from the other side? Do, do you feel that, honestly? Do you think that, um, that uh, like we're using, easy to use, oh, you, you hate me because I'm different colour to you? Do you think it's easy to use or do you think... No, because I think, you know, coming from, from my diverse community sort of perspective, I'd always say you should always approach everything from the idea of take a person as they are. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't have that. And, you know, a lot of people don't do that in society. We see this every single day where they want to make you feel bad about who you are. And... It's n not something we can change. We can't change who we are. We can't change who we've come from. And I wouldn't say I've ever had that experience personally or ever seen that. I think, you know, I come from a privileged perspective in terms of, in terms of race. I can't speak directly to the issues. But I would say that so many people, even now, I speak to who, my friends, and they'll just say, it's the everyday things that get to them. It's mm. the fact that they they can see the difference in the way they're treated by, by, by some people, you know, not looking unlike myself, who would walk down the street and would cross the road when they see them. And they're, not, they're no different from me or Dom. Can I just ask you a last question to you? Uh, we're going to go for a little break in a yeah. minute. Because um, you'll be leaving us. So yes. I'm just going to ask you, yeah. how do we improve that relationship we have in that diverse community how do we get away from that race thing what do we supposed to do again I, I what would you do what, what would well, you do I mean I do come from it from a privilege and I, I, admit, I openly admit that I'd say more than anything it's about people like me listening and I try to listen to my friends every single day when they talk to me about this sort of thing and talk about the level of discrimination that they face and it's not just about being performative and doing the social media posts and saying, you know, Black Lives Matter here, Black Lives Matter there. It's about the everyday, what you do to help and ensure that, you know, you tackle your own biases. Brilliant. I, I have them. So. Thank you. I want to thank you um, for giving us time today. I hope yes. to have you once more time. I think it'll be brilliant. I'm yeah. going to uh, say goodbye to you. We have another guest coming. So, dear viewers, we're going to go for a small break now and stay with us. Come after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Apnara Dixon, our community. Dear viewers, uh, welcome back again. And we have a new guest for you. 
Uh, some of you know this face very well. He, she's been here a few times. Um, of course, um, she doesn't want me to say all about her, but I'll just start with, she's a counsellor and she's Sahana Begum. And most of you know, we've done a few shows on mental health and we talked about it. And I know most of you loved it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to mix it up Bangla and English for you because we have Dominic here, he's the life experience he's been through, we talked about it, and now we'll try to get some uh, experience help. So we have someone here, we should use it. So, living room, so they might understand something because we're talking about real issues about the young people. Because mm. this is a very, very crucial time and they're going through a really bad time as well. You know, like self-harming, uh, mental health issues, depression. It's coming into young people as well. So we'll mix it up, inshallah, as much as we can. Um, Shana Rafa, welcome, and thank you for thank making you. time. And I'm very sorry, I know I changed the topic for you again <laughs> within an hour. I okay. You will plan something else. Inshallah, we will continue with your topic again. We'll do it again, inshallah, the one we talked about last time. Inshallah. So I'm sorry, I know you're not prepared for this one. <laughs> Not to worry. Okay, so before we come to you, I want you to understand what Dominic talking about, so you can uh, have you'll have a clue what we what kind of help we need. Dominic, thank you uh, for sharing your uh, personal uh, um, experience. Mm. Um, I really, really appreciate you use that. Um, you said you've been through a depression and mental health issues, and and one time you were thinking about. Um, giving your life away, which is the most uh, important for every one of us. Mm. Um, what made you go that far that people hasn't noticed, or you, didn't you get any help? I, I think I think there's 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 a couple of points there. Um, I think a lot of people won't be able to take that step to get help because they are held back by the stigma which exists in society around mental health. Uh, you know, the whole, the whole notion around if you say something, you are classified as weak. Um, and if, if you say you're struggling, um, people will you know, laugh mm. at you or, you know, goodness knows, do worse. Um, so I think for someone to actually come forward and say, I am struggling with this, I'm struggling with my mental health, Actually, that's the bravest it thing is. they can do. It is. And I think anyone who does, and even those who are still struggling, should be commended for that um, and for just, just keeping going. Um, and then it's, all, I mean, it's, it's also a question about the provision of mental health services, uh, the waiting lists uh, within the NHS at the moment, um, how quickly people can access those life-saving services, and I'm sure you'll speak to that yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but there are so many things that can lead up to that <coughs> point of one wanting to either self-harm or take their own life. Um, and I don't think you can put a blanket cover on it and say, this is all one, you know, yeah. all covered. There are a multitude of reasons. And every single person you've got to remember as an individual and will have been on their own journey and will have had experiences, things happen to them in their life that have made them the way they are, the way they think. So I think treating people as individuals when it comes to mental health is so, so, so important. It's the value of the human being. Um, and it, it's, it is treating mental health with exactly the same priority, if not more than physical health. Is it possible just to, just to identify, did you identify any of the issues that you think that made me do that, that made me do that? Did you identify any of the um, issues that made you to go that line? I think it's for me personally, it's very hard for me to put my finger on exactly okay. what led up to, to what. Okay. I, th I think it was a lot of things that happened sort of at the same time. Um, it was um, <coughs> friends, relationships, sort of okay. pe people and connections breaking apart. Um, it was a lot of change of circumstances, moving to a new place and um, just the, even, even wow. just looking at the world around me. Even the so moving the space to help, oh wow. I, I can see it's, it's how little it is, but it can affect people. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Could I just say, I see yes, to come yeah. In. Um, yeah. thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, it's like you said, it's, it's a really, really brave thing to do to actually reach out yeah. for help and say mm. I'm struggling. Mm. Um, and anyone who does should be given support. They should be 
first and foremost listened to yeah. and not mm. cross-examined mm. like, as some people do. Yeah. Are you telling the truth? Are you attention seeking? Why are you saying this? Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. Yeah. And on and on. But I think by, if we could maybe summarize some of um, what he's just said in Bangla yeah. for the benefit of uh, Bengali viewers. I will struggle because I will miss out and I would, I would, I would probably, they would misunderstand. Um, I could try. I okay. could try. You, I'll, I'll you try and help if I can. Okay. You want to start or shall I start? You can, you can start. Okay. Amra, um, Allah Purse Lama from Nar, Kubi Joruri, Tamra Buza Lagaki of Nar. It's Amra Ita Jubonto Eta Gotuna of Nar. Ebay of Nar, he done his BA, is a very successful person when it comes to education. And it's Inshallah Bushat and Councillor Oiva. So he is very well um, person. If for what I know of Nar, a Mongolo is a depression, we say of Nemento Hotis, a Menatashon, where I still tie note, and poison Jeff, Jibondo was to Egisil of Nar. Abong E. Obostat, Tan Huiraze, Manashona Sumat and Namatai to Aki, are you okay? Are you all right? So it that Afna, how do you answer them? Oh, okay, I'm all right, I'm all right. Mm. But mm. to come out and say bravely that I'm going through this, it is actually a shock, like a shumbong, when I had Jibon the Adelaide of Nar, sometimes too late. He managed. So that's the thing, that's what we want to learn from here. That you will go through lots of things, Afne Zaiba, Kintu Afne Yekila Huiba Ish Hawash Takin Shohlonai. The Zenish Tekta was very important at the Zenish that Mancho Doraya Hon, Abu Lamisho Huidumu, Mancha Marikila Debo, Ginebo, Chutoman Horbo, Fagologisuni, Buzanani, all these things Mancha Namlaga Debo Afnade. Then because of that, Mancho Hot to Saina, isn't it? So all Zenish Kula, Ambra, Zanina, Ambra Harfua, Bafuri, Ambra Harik, Oyazar. So, if you are not able to do this, you will give up. If, before you go, all I know is we need to come out and talk about it and try to get help. Mm. Does that cover? What's yeah, I think you've covered most of most of it. And shall I? Bangla is quite a difficult issue, but on a man, shall I struggle for it? Quite as an amar, other than our shvidar, because shall be quite bad than a oh. Hene Mala should be doit to to my Gordora se Hania se Omokor de Ho Kizat problem um Taras Tara coping horror, managing horror, to make any struggle hortai. Um which obviously makes it worse. Emala shall reply on the arrow situation to worse it as an e I mean say slum actually both shaosh lagi um shadjo shadjo cyber lagi kustega lagi shadjo kustegale oile on that manch actually buzoina than a key don or struggle ta, Bahene Pamra Monahori than a O study horba, Goraiba, Namas horba, Mava for location, the Horima by Nashena. Oile shall a young manch or laggy, on a doron on an unreasonable laggy, manch struggle horrend. Ah, shall a tarab buzard or haramra resudes your relationship balatahe, young manch or logge, Amra buzard cheshagrad or har. So, there are many people who are teenagers, but they are not going to be able to do it. So, they are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do it. On no support file that are you help you bo. They even discuss this discussion for a door car. Door like a school or support as a GP taki support for they bo counseling by talking therapies. Aina Shaina. I just want to add something. Dominic, actually, we live in an open society. Actually, in UK, one of the most open place for being there. You can say anything. You can do anything. But when it comes to uh, Asian community, actually, mm. it's very difficult to come out and say, I've got these issues. Mm. You know, it, it's first thing is they will, like you said, stigma and name call yeah. and this and that. Mm. You, somehow they isolate you just because you've been through that. They would don't understand that what people, how can you, they would, they, would, they would question you. You're a young person now. What do you mean you got this, this, this? Yeah. What are you talking about? Mm. They won't understand because we actually quite uh, uh, um, somehow we try to cover it up. Number one, number two, yeah. 
like if, hap if that happens to one person, it actually affects the asta guru rize. Ita ya mani amade juni ata boro mani shor mor bishoy je. Yek guru khel jodi afna ite depression oba idhong ki choy je. Amra mone asta guru rige se. And somehow amra water use hori. So khoytam se oh tor bai gol hoyge se ni, tor boni gol hoyge se ni, tor tuiko tor hoyge se ni, tor hoti fagol. Ei rokham shobdo amra use hori. This is is inhuman. Egula shob use hara wosit nae. Yato manshob bemar bemar. Can you imagine Imon Bemal Zartai, Mansuri Morto Saitara? I think Bomurkito it for it. I think so. We're struggling with the cultural uh, issues involved in Telagiaki. Actually, Octa will know main issues and a Mancha Buzo in a depression Zinish Takita, problem Takita, Monahoroin, oh, Monahoi Gulazi, Monahoi Shoitanedor Lise, Monahoi Behote Zarki. Um, all sorts of different reasons. Oile depression, oile echta illness, echta bemar, and that's what needs to be understood. The more people can, you know, as Hal website of um easy to easily explain hora oise plain English, plain English or depression kita, anxiety kita. Amra ashle shobar buzar chesta chesta hora Of course, I want to touch on something um, uh, self harm, which is. Uh, I had a few years back actually. I, I, I didn't understand where, where I met one of those youth workers and she used to run a session for young ladies, young girls. And that part, that place is m mostly uh, Bangladeshi girls mm -hmm. are there. Okay. So she told me, um, called me in the office, said, do you know something? I know you do youth work as well for your boys. Do you know that young underage girls are harming themselves? So what are you talking about? Uh, what do you mean? What kind of harm? He said they just slice their hands. They cut their this that. You, you, if you open the finger, you will find them. For me, it was shocking. Honestly, I was shocking. They, I'm not committing manshuri malo izi bikita ho. I'm not bunen tuwa lekhu. Nizi nizi khatpa kila. I didn't understand what she said. Mm -hmm. Then afterward, actually, I, be, I believe what she said actually. So self harming is becoming a way to uh, trying to uh, decrease their pain or something. That's what they think. I don't know if that helps. So if you have, I'm sure in your work, you find people like that. If you could touch on that mm -hmm. for us to understand the situation. I think self-harm, it's unfortunately, it's increasing more and more and the age seems to be getting younger and mm -hmm. younger. Um, I've worked at a secondary school for a year and it's, it's alarming um, the number of Young children that are self harming and mm. self harming amrazu di bang lai hoi, self harming mani nize nizor knife dia ba blade dia at hati lai da ba. Actually, um, self harm na nan jati jiase, different types of self harm. I think the most common, beshi common to ilo, you know, um, making themselves bleed, um, mm. inflicting pain on themselves um, as a way of, you know, Mm. Managing or trying to cope. Can I ask I which? Uh, I'll just come to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, which part, the mostly, when they do this, do you know what they do it? Because this so, is also, so the parents yeah. can at least look, look up. Look, what, what she's going through. This is yeah. crazy pain. Yeah. So, Beshion so, Shashalekata on the upper arm, um, on places that are hidden and covered, okay. um, where there's legs, thighs. Um, Sadly, you know, people do resort to. Um, it's it's a way to cope, really, for them, for that individual. Obviously, it's a very unhealthy and a dangerous yeah. way to try and cope with their inner distress and pain. Um, but if parent, parents could look out for either bruises or um, mm. bleeding. You know, some people mm, yeah. resort to pulling their hair out, mm. scratching themselves. So there are different things that people do, um, children even. Children as young as 12, 13 mm. even, um, which is really sad. So if parents could look out for those signs, but I think that would go hand in hand with other symptoms. So. They might be angry, there might be anger mm -hmm. issues, uh, snappy. Mm -hmm. um, if there's changes in their eating habits, sleeping habits, to notice those things as well and see if there's, a, you know, have a conversation, see what's going on. And really that 
friendship needs to be there, that mm -hmm. relationship course, between yeah. the parents and children mm -hmm. need to be there. You were going to say something, Gondi? Yeah, no, I think, I think um, this goes to the wider point of, again, mental health, and I think a lot of this stems from, we talked about the culture of bullying. Bullying will have a profound impact on your mental health. Mental health declines, and then the more it is impressed on you by bullies, that you are not worthy, you need to hate yourself for some reason, the more you start to believe it. Yeah. And I've had friends who've self-harmed in the past and, and, and it was very much in their minds, it was, I've been told that I'm not worthy, I've been told that I need to hate myself. And that is a form of punishment in a way. And I think, and as you, you know, as you said so, you know, so brilliantly about just explaining it. I think we need to just be aware of that and just, again, looking out for those signs. Um, and again, remembering they may not all be visible. I don't know why, why would we believe someone says, you know, I'm not worthy of this and you're not worthy of that. How, why, would, why should people believe these words? I'm sure it's not like you, I'm sure there's, there's more to it. Um, Especially nowadays, we think that young people are, have more intellect or they know more than age of my people because I'm 52 and I wonder how much do I know about internet and all that stuff. But they actually every day searching and learning, mm. you know, they're becoming really expert in a lot of mm. things. They don't know how to handle mm. them, to be honest mm. with you. I think a lot of young people are... I, th I, th I, th I think, yeah, the internet, it's, it's a vast, it's a broad place. Um, and while there can be a lot of good, there can also be a lot of misinformation and a lot of bad as well. And just what you look for on the internet, what you see on the internet, that influences how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the world around you. And that has, again, that impact on mental health and how you feel about yourself. So I think people have to be really careful about what they post, we go back to online bullying as well. What people post about each other online, that you know, you, you said earlier that, oh, taking a picture of someone and suddenly the whole world's seen it and your life is ruined. That has to be looked at much more widely than it currently is. You know, um, because you're dealing with the real life issues uh, and people, um, somehow still in our community, in our community, especially Bangladeshi community, they haven't taken that seriously, honestly. They haven't. We haven't seen any change in the parents. We haven't seen any change in how they talk to their kids or given times. We're dealing with really, really a, a difficult uh, situation. These things, like you said, you have to know your kids, you have to be friendly with them, you have mm. to. So that should be showing. You know, it, it will show have you changed or not. You just can't do, oh, just brush it down. Because we look at the young people. Look at the young, why do you think they're selling drugs? Why do you think they're in gangs? Because they're somehow they've been looked at, oh, you're not working, you've got nothing to do, you're rubbish, you don't, you're this, you're lazy, you're blah, 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 you name them, and they end up in something. So look, I'm doing something, I've got a car now, I've got this, you talk to me, I'll do something to you. So somehow reacting in that line. So what, what do you think that we, why do you think people are not taken seriously in our community? I think it's still quite new in our community. Um, so are you referring to understanding mental health? Yeah, among, uh, in, in especially in young people, especially young people and the parents. They, I don't see any changes. The communication between those mm. two groups, yeah. it's not changed. They're not coming out and saying, I'm not your dad, I'm your friend. I'm not your enemy, I'm your, you know, someone in your yeah. side. Yeah, I think... We haven't seen that behaviour. Probably because these days, parents, they're probably re repeating um, how they were raised and I don't want to use the word recycling, but um, sort of repeating um, what they saw, their, yeah, their own upbringing and how their parents disciplined them. And they're repeating that. Mm. Um, I think maybe that's one of the issues. There is some difference and attitudes are changing, okay. I think, uh, more and more than in the olden days because I think we had, it was a little bit black and white in the olden days, um, whereas mm. 
you either go straight into work or um, you've got to, you've got the three criteria become doctor, lawyer, engineer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you're a failure. <laughs> um, so attitudes are changing. I think yeah. people are taking on more of what their children are wanting yeah. in life. Uh, so there is some change there. Um, I think we've all got probably a long way to go. Yes. Uh, it's felt more so within the Asian community. And that probably goes back to history um, where, uh, you know, in our own countries, um, a good career was <clears throat> either in those professions, you know, doctor, lawyer, engineer, or some, someone who's in, in an office. That's yeah. how they used to describe yeah. it, isn't it? Um, office or khamwele, iktawele important. Um, so I think attitudes are changing now, nowadays with, um, I think the second generation, our generation being parents. Um, there is, well, from my experience anyway, some change, but still I think lots more understanding and um, awareness of young people and how they're developing because the last 10 years there's been a huge change in mm. um, social media, yeah. how people interact, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. even school-based learning. Um, there's a lot of online, you know, there's online classroom, you've got to be on the screen um, to access homework, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of it is online, and so I think we need to be aware of how to guide them and support them as well, because they will come across all sorts online, um, yeah. and maybe um, we could have shared some safety tips, but yeah. we weren't really prepared for this stuff. <laughs> well, okay. I wasn't anyway to discuss uh, have this discussion, but we can touch on it, and parents could look into how to keep kids safe online yeah. and there are various apps that they can use yeah. to you know keep track of um, online websites etc that are being accessed mm -hmm. and you know you see which ones might be harmful dangerous etc okay um, I'm going to come to you I'm just, we're going to have a small break dear viewers even next run will be very important. Because the tips you have to do is to help you to help you to help you to help So stay with us, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Our community. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Shamarin to Priyo Bai Bunara. Welcome. Avaro. Amra Alab Alusana Kurti Islam Aske. Very practical issues near Aske. So, Amanda Shatri Thakin, inshallah. Abashi Shamarin, I came to very, will hope, will give you some tips that might help your home or your friends or whoever is going through those issues. Monak Shamay Amra Ashole, Monakta Deki Ashole, right tips Kula Milana. So, we have practical issues, and Alhamdulillah, we have someone here who can help. She's been through that. Uh, she's not been through that. She actually helps the people who've been through. So, Ami, I'm going to go on my left again. I'm going to start with Dominic again. Dominic, um, you amazed me um, what you've been through, and now you want to change the society and you want to build this community. And um, hopefully, in the future, you're going to become something really, really a big, probably a prime minister in the future. Why not? <laughs> so, if you want to become a councillor, of course, that's how sh that should be your aim. Um, so, you actually dealing with the community where they're very diverse and so how do you deal with them how do you engage with them well um, it's it's very wonderful actually that we have such a diverse community because I think in diversity lies our strength actually um, and when I I give you a recent example I was I tested positive for COVID on the 14th of December uh, last year oh, sorry to hear that. and um, I, I felt all right uh, ups and down peaks and troughs but um, yeah, it was fine but actually the most consistent person who was helping me out was my running mate uh, Mapul Bay who brought me uh, almost every single day home-cooked meals oh, that's um, nice. and that was really really nice and again at the start of the pandemic as well when everyone sort of went into lockdown and isolation we saw people 
being kind in the community. I'd never spoken to my neighbours before that. But suddenly, you know, just seeing how we can help each other out, having conversations, you know, from one balcony to another. And it was really, really wonderful to see people say, you know, if you need me to post you something, if you need shopping, if you need something wow. from the pharmacy, let me know. Here's my number. And I, I think we saw a shift, a change in attitude, people suddenly being a lot kinder to each other because everyone was in that, in that situation of, you know, we're all dealing with this pandemic. Why not let's be nice to each other and let's all talk to each other. We're all in this together. And when one community suffers, we all suffer. Yeah, one of the issues for young people, actually, because we talked mm. about them, yeah. Yeah. I think somehow we, we noticed that a lot of uh, youth clubs are shutting down. Yeah. And where do they end up in being gangs? Mm. You know, it's just direct actions. You do that, they go yeah. doing this. Yeah. Where do they go? There's no green space. There's no youth clubs open. Mm. There is, there is, where do they go? What, what happens to them? So that's where they end up in going to uh, whatever we don't want them to do, so doing it. So yeah. how do we deal with these kind of issues? So I think recognising that youth services are really, you know, youth services are vital and recognising that I think is a first step. But I think there are many things we can do to make sure that people don't fall into the wrong, you know, fall in with the wrong people, etc. Uh, I think the, you know, p putting in place safety nets is really important. Um, for, so I'll give you an example. Um, Tower Hamlets Council have shut quite a lot of youth centres uh, across the borough. Um, but we have a scheme in, uh, in my ward in St Catharines and Wapping um, which has actually generated £4.3 million pounds in revenue um, through fines. We have a bus gate, um, which means that only buses and motorcyclists are allowed to drive through it um, and residents aren't exempt and they've been fined uh, quite significant and high proportions um, for using, for, for still driving through there. So the council have made quite a lot of money in revenue from that scheme, £4.3 million. Pounds. And I'd actually like to see some of that reinvested into youth services. Let's get, you know, let's get those youth services reopened. I think also things like football clubs locally are really important. We have uh, the Wapping Football Club, um, which is, which is you know, incredibly important. And actually my running mate, Mapubai, um, his son, um, you know, that was a life, you know, it was a lifeline for him to have that football club. Um, and he's now uh, training there. Do you, do you really feel that you've been, the young people have been neglected by uh, um, the upper hands? Do you feel that? I, 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 I do in a way. Um, did you feel it when you were young? Did you feel it when you were young, when you were in, in that age? So imagine, you, of course you're still young. I'm talking about when you were 17, <laughs> 18. Did you really feel that? that I think they don't like us. They think we are the problem. We are the one who's causing all this. Thing. Is, that, is that how you felt or did you? I think looking at what's happened recently, um, there was a lot of, around the vaccine uptake, there was a lot of penalising from the government of young people saying, oh, you know, like young people aren't taking the vaccination, uh, young people, blah, 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 blah. But young people weren't actually eligible at the time to get the vaccination, yet they were still being blamed for the low so, numbers of Some of them is true, though, as well, isn't it? Some of them, you know, how young people are. If you tell them to do something, they would Actually, always send around. Actually, I think you, you find when, when, when young people were offered the chance to get vaccinated, uh, when I, I think I remember it was Twickenham Stadium opened up, had one day where anyone could come, no questions asked, and get vaccinated, young people turned out in droves and got vaccinated to protect themselves and their communities. So I think actually sort of singling out any group um, I, I, I don't think is right, um, because at the end of the day, I think, I think we're all trying to do the best for our community and trying to keep each other safe uh, and singling people out won't, won't, won't help uptake of vaccination uh, or attitudes, actually. Thank you. Um, I think we were talking about the big issue. The reason is, you know, the young people we see, why are they ending up in these kind of issues? Yeah. Actually, the bigger roles are there, actually. They're not being... They probably didn't do well in school. They probably they can't go anywhere. There's yeah. no green space. There's nowhere to play. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. Wherever they go, the morning, morning. Oh, you, 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 you. And now they're ending up harming themselves and this and that. Mm. So if you don't look at the big picture, yeah. it's only uh, trying to find a way of solution. It's never gonna work, is it? 
No, I think... Mum and dad, it's not only yeah. they can do it, it's not in the, on their hand, to be honest with you. I think um, it's a huge, huge subject. Mm. And yeah, absolutely. Parents are the primary um, teachers as well as guides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they need to, I'm sure everyone's doing their best. Yeah. Um, parents have got their own struggles. Um, maybe they're struggling, whether it's finances, mm. um, raising, you know, raising children is a tough job in itself. <laughs> The most rewarding job, job, but the toughest job too. <laughs> I'm a mother, so <laughs> yeah. I know um, from experience. But I think going back to youth centres closing, mm. um, I actually wanted to add that Please do. young people not having anywhere to go, turning yeah. to whether it's gang-related problems, violence, etc., etc. What can our community do? What can our community leaders do? What can mm. the mosques do um, to help? Um, if we, it's easy to say, yeah, um, have that open there so they can just go there. But yeah. that's not there. Yeah. So what can we do? Um, why can't we come together, parents, uh, community leaders, and um, come up with some ideas, get the youth involved? Um, come on, guys. What, how do you think we can resolve this? Get them on board. Mm. Um, and see if we can find ways to move forward. I'm sure we can. There are parks. Yeah. There are yeah. all sorts of things that we can do with the youth. They, they are yeah. actually happening. You want to add something to it? Uh, just, just very oh. briefly, I think um, we've seen locally, at least where I am, locally in St Catharines and Wapping, we've seen quite uh, an uptake in the use of nitrous oxide gas canisters. Mm -hmm. um, and I think largely the uptake in that is because young people don't have any alternatives of going somewhere else and actually that public education aspect of educating them on the risks of nitrous oxide laughing gas yeah. um, it you know it can cause a whole you know load of tissue um, problems yeah. uh, as well as uh, sexual issues as well uh, down further down the line um, so I think what we're calling for at least is you know a massive public health campaign because this is not you know, it's fine to say this is an issue yeah. of antisocial behaviour and gang crime as well. Mm -hmm. And but even more so, I think it's a public health issue. And I think that's something you, you've already touched on as well. Mm -hmm. I think if you all come together, like you said before, you know, the church and the mosque and those worship places, they're mostly closed down. Yeah, they only open on Sundays or probably in you know, other days they open. I mean, why do we have to, even for Muslims, why do we have to shut down the mosque? Why don't we open up for the young people to do something? You do your prayers and after that they can play, yeah. they can do something, they can do homework, and you, you ask for funds, they should, they should have access to the funds. I think more and more mosques are opening up and accommodating more of the community's needs, uh, alhamdulillah for that. Mm. But I think we have to look back at initially the mosques, the masjids were set up by the first generation that came over who were literally working working just about getting some sleep and doing their prayers if they can and they opened up the masjids literally just to be able to pray in congregation um, and you know they did a lot that generation they paved the way for us to be comfortable at this day and age um, it was tough for them to pray mm. it was tough for them to get halal food um, they sacrificed their lives for yeah. others for their families relatives re mm. kind of shouldering the burden for you know half the generation back home probably just helping 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 and over here their vision well for most anyway wasn't that they're mm. going to bring over their families and establish a community etc so it was just meeting their basic needs mm. um, when they initially came over anyway I hope I don't stir any um, no, 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 that's very true, actually. Somehow we forget yeah. their uh, value of whatever so, the sacrifices so, yeah, they made, so we somehow people, actually forget yeah, that. So that's not fair. People complain these uncles on their committees and they, you know, they don't take on board the community's issues, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. These uncles are the ones that paved yeah, the way for us. True. And we've got to acknowledge that of and course. pay respect um, for, you know, respect them for the sacrifices that they made. And yeah, things are changing, but slowly. Um, and if uncles on committees are listening, um, I think times are changing. And the masjid was the hub of the community in the Prophet's time. And the more we can do that, the more we can involve young people 
get them into the masjids um, as a place for them to feel safe, mm. to congregate, to socialize, then mm. the more the better we can protect our young people. Uh, and maybe you could summarize that in brief. Yeah. Just bang Bri again. <laughs> briefly, at the, at the start of COVID, I, I keep going back to that. But actually, I think uh, faith groups um, and those uh, people in the community were really, really, really important. Yeah. Um, and they provided a lot of good to our yeah. community and our areas by you know, delivering meals for people who were isolating, who yeah. couldn't go shopping for themselves. And faith groups played a really, really large part it's in, true. in I think they don't get the this, They don't get the right value. They don't though. get the value. They don't they get deserve. the right recognize no, what they're doing, not. to be honest with no. you. They are actually, like when we talk about uh, homeless, you know, who, who gives them the shelters? Mm. The people of faith. Yeah. You know, they do amazing stuff. Somehow they've been overlooked or they don't look, look down into that. You, you're not doing much. Mm. I think there's um, a lot of preconceptions of people of certain faith groups. And I think the more we can break down those preconceptions, I think the better. And that's, I hope, what we're all trying to do. Brilliant. I'm going to just uh, wrap up with your, uh, what you just said before. Mm -hmm. You want to say in Bengali. So, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going we all should come together. We 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 should so that's supposed to be a community center, not just mosque. So I'm not the area of the center for you. I want to use the value of 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 the I think somehow we need to value what they've done for us and the sacrifice they made. So that was your uh, message. We don't have much time. Um, I want, if you could give us, I know uh, that wasn't the topic we're supposed to come and say, but can you give us a few tips, the safety tips for our parents, what they should look up for? If they see those signs, that means they should get help or they should do something about it. So that's your camera. If you could give us a few tips. What have okay. I seen your head comes in? Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Um, so tips for looking out um, for signs of mental health issues. Mental health or self-harming or those okay. few two things is yeah. important. So um, I think I've touched on it before that if you notice um, changes in sleep patterns, eating habits, if they're not themselves, as in mm. if they used to be far more talkative and they've gone a bit quiet, um, maybe look out for those things. Um, obviously, if you notice in dangerous things or unusual things in their rooms, um, if they're keeping um, a sharp tool or razors or um, if you see any signs of blood anywhere, um, ask them, you know, I'm concerned or what's this about, um, are you okay? And, and to let them know that I'm here to help you, I'm here to support you. If you're struggling with something, talk to me. Yeah. But if they're being shouted at or called lazy or, you know, igu miliamisha solenna matosa na igur kito ise hangyu izar or, you know, that's the key thing, buzar, buzar And I think that's where, um, that's probably the most important thing, to listen to them um, and let them know that we're there to help them because Beautiful. help is out there. Otherwise, they're left to it, they're left alone. Thank you. 
Um, if I come to you, uh, Dominic, um, you have learned through your experience, you know, learn hard way, to be honest with you. That probably made you a better person, I'm definitely sure. The people are watching, if they are going through the similar things you've mentioned earlier, what do you think they should do? What advice would you give, the, give them? Uh, what ideas would you give them to do? Well, I think it's really important that if you think you are struggling with mental health, uh, if you think you're struggling in any other way, it's really, really important to make sure that you talk to people. I think having dialogue, having open conversations um, is really, really important. But for people who want to be there for their friends, for their family, I think being approachable and actually approaching the people around you saying, you know, not just, are you okay? And sort of brushing it off, but asking again, are you really okay? You know, I really want to know what is going on in your life. I really want to know what's bugging you, what's, what, what's getting to you at the moment. And having those really meaningful, deep conversations uh, is really, really crucial and can actually save someone's life. Um, so have those conversations and don't be afraid to, to approach someone if you need to. But um, mostly, first and foremost, is that you're actually really brave um, for going through that. And um, if you can't come to someone right now, that's fine. Come to someone when you're ready. But there is always help out there. And there are people who are willing to listen. I think that's important. Thank you very much. I'm going to just add yeah, to that. Please that do. There are please. Um, confidential helplines out yes. there. Yeah. So yeah. if they want to, if they're feeling overwhelmed, um, they can call Samaritan's Helpline, who are there 24 7 yeah. um, to listen to them in confidence. Um, they can also approach, um, I suppose this is for the adults, counsellors, psychotherapists, mm -hmm. um, out mm -hmm. either through their GP. Uh, through the NHS or um, private counsellors, psychotherapists yeah. like yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, and nobody else needs to know about it. Um, but So what I'm saying is there is help out there and uh, they don't have to deal with it alone. And yeah. I think a lot of the times, uh, one of the biggest problems is that they're fighting this battle alone. Mm -hmm. And this aloneness mm -hmm. is just such a struggle that they start to give up on others, on pretty much life itself. So yeah. um, if you are struggling, um, please reach out for help. There is help out there and you don't have to do this alone. If I could ask you just to say a few words in Bengali, like sometimes we don't understand when you say counseling that you guys do. What do you normally do? How do you help them? If you could say in Bengali, because sometimes what happens is we think, I'll go there, that person will advise me and that's it. I'm, been advised by my mom or I've been mm. advised by my friend, isn't that enough? So it's not the same thing going to you or coming to yeah. me. It's, not, it's, it's two different things. Yeah. You're, you're dealing with this. Yeah. So I think the Bangladesh, if you could say a few lines, that yeah. what kind of stuff you do, okay. and they will understand because they, are, they need help. People yeah. are there. And this is where I'm going to struggle. Okay. So, <laughs> so counseling is an advice, right? I've heard what's going on for you. Go and do XYZ. It's not that. It's helping my clients to explore what's going on for them and helping them to realize um, how they can um, overcome these struggles. So yeah, strategies we can discuss, um, how they can do things to cope better with their mental health. Um, but a lot of it is actually helping them to understand and offload they're carrying such a weight mm. for so long helping them to put it down gradually bit by bit um, through talking through being understood what's been going on for them mm. why they're struggling so much okay. um, one one example could be that um, a young person's grown up and just say a young young boy in his mid-20s and he's expected you know um, to get married right get your career in order, establish, establish yourself, uh, and so on. But is he ready? Is he um, at the mm. right stage mm. for him to be able to take that step? Mm. Um, getting married these days comes with this added pressure of you need to have some 40, 50K 
just to spend on the wedding itself. Um, all sorts of pressure and that are just sort of um, there, the expectation is there, yeah, even if they're yeah. not pressuring them vocally. And, uh, you know, sure. um, so that kind of pressure can lead to a person feeling like, I'm supposed to do that, but I can't yet, or I haven't been able to. And it, it can start to affect people's um, confidence and the rest of it. Um, so being aware of... Sure. It's almost like you're well. empowering that person and he, he does it himself, isn't it, or she does it himself. Yeah, or counselling is exactly That's how that. it is. Okay, thank you very much. Empowering um, them to help themselves, but um, being beside them. <laughs> thank you. I think, I think we, we, you guys done an amazing job today. You made, it, you made it easy for me. I know it's a new topic. Not new no, topic, no, it's but it's just like untold topic, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> you've you, you made an amazing uh, contribution today. Um, may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dear viewers, I'm going to ask you a question. 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 So we need to find a solution. And get help. That's more important. If help, we will be able to help. Sometimes it becomes too late. When it's too late, we will be able to help. 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 That's the only thing I can do. So, I mean, we have to do it. 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 We have to do it.